you're welcome. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications. Hello, welcome. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment that you all have been waiting for. We are live, live, live. You are listening to the live broadcast of your friendly neighbor, Stream Doctor and Christian Apologist. 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 The most wanted man. The undisputed, the undefeated public enemy of Islam. 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 And your favorite YouTuber, Rob Christian. Please fasten your seatbelts. Houston, we are ready for takeoff. Oh. 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 We are back, baby. We are here to stay. We are live. Let's go. We are lit. Hello, guys. Welcome. We are live. As you heard it correctly, we are live. I hope that everybody is doing okay. God bless you guys. I hope that my sound is loud and clear. I was having some technical uh, difficulties on my end, but I think it's all okay. Right, guys? Give me a one, please. If the f screen is okay, if everything uh, is okay on your side, God bless you. Uh, oh, we have K Soccer Films in the house, admin. Uh, Eden, hello, uh, K Soccer Films, God bless you. Hello, Eden. Uh, we have Sheikh Umad. How are you, Sheikh Umad? Uh, I think. Also, Tamara, I saw Tamara. Yes, Tamara is here too. God bless you, Tamara. Maybe the other admins will join later. Uh, Phil Herrera and others. God bless you. XYZ, how are you, my friend? God bless you. Uh, Swaisev, how are you? Allah is in the house. How are you, Allah? I hope you are not busy praying for, not to, Muhammad. Anyway. Hello, Fanar. How are you? Kaferlin. Clark. Sherlock Holmes. Uh, Gerard Boda, how are you? Teach, teaching 25, I hope I'm not butchering your name. Roy Batong, Epi Friends, I, Sean Guide, how are you, my friend? God bless you, a regular. Uh, Robert Titauru, welcome. 
Uh, so many people already here. That's amazing. Guys, please invite. Smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Click on the notification bell. Hello, Lost and Fine. How are you? Uh, Fla41 or Fla4A. How are you? Regina De Cruz. Joshua Anthony. If I forgot to mention your name, please forgive me. There are many names in the live chat. God bless you. Please don't forget to invite. And share the link on social media, guys. Let us invite as many people as we can. Today we have a lot of topics to talk about. And the main topic, uh, as you see, is uh, exposing the hypocrisy of the Muslims in 2021. We're going to go through some Islamic sources and whatnot. You know uh, how my setup works. Uh, we don't get anything from our own invention. We go to the Muslim books, we go to the Quran, we go to the Hadith, we go to the Tafsir, and if Muslims get triggered and call us liars, that means your Quran, your, your Muhammad, your Prophet Muhammad was a liar, your scholars are liars because we are only reading what they said. So if you have a problem with me, <laughs> you are another hypocrite because you should have a problem with your own books and scholars, with your Quran and your Prophet. You see, when we read their books, when we read their scriptures, that means we are doing hate. We are haters. Can you imagine? Can you imagine this hypocrisy of the Muslims? Anyway. So I love it when Muslims get triggered. It shows us that they have no answer for our arguments. And, you know. That's what they got. You know, they call us haters. They call us Islamophobes. I mean, if reading the Quran and reading the hadith of your prophet, the sunnah of your prophet, if that's a hate, then your prophet was a hater. Don't blame me. All right. Welcome, guys. <clears throat> As you know, we always start with a nice prayer. So I want to ask you uh, to pray with me. I want you to pray with me in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We pray. Lord Christ, thank you for allowing me to do another live stream again. Please bless our audience, all the admins and our subscribers. Lord Christ, thank you for coming into this world to save us from eternal damnation. We really needed you, O Christ. Without you, we would have been lost. You are the joy to this world. Lord, I want to ask you to keep my wife and baby boy healthy and safe at all times. Protect them and bless them. Bless everybody who is here now and listening and watching to our very live stream. Thank you for this lovely audience and subscribers who are always here to support us day in, day out. Please bless them, their loved ones and families. Please protect all of us and keep all of us healthy and safe, especially the ones who are risking their lives by trying to refute this evil cult of Muhammad, who we created 1,400 years ago. Father, enfold us in your arms to help us not to lean on our own understanding, but in everything acknowledge you, so that you can direct our words, thoughts, and actions. Jesus, I pray to you, and I ask you to give us a small measure of your strength, so that we might not give in to any taqiyya, any makr, any deception, any lies, or any, any doubt, Lord. Please help us honor you in all our ways. Christ, I ask you to shine your holy light on all of us, including the Muslims who might be in need, who might be here in the live chat sitting because they don't get the answers from their shiuch, from their imams and ustas. They are here. Maybe they can find the truth if they are really listening and caring for the truth. Please open their eyes so also they can be saved. As we are saved through your holy blood, O Christ, your name above all names. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit and loosen my tongue today and guide me so I can speak the truth, nothing but the truth, without any error or any shame. Lord, give us wisdom and courage to do whatever needs to be done today. In your holy name, O Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. We are back, baby. We are live. 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 Welcome, everybody. Let's go. Guys, on this live show, we will have the opportunity to expose the hypocrisy of Muslims in Islam in 2021. Still 
they need to do all kinds of mental gymnastics to try to sugarcoat the beautiful version of Islam, right? When Muhammad was in Mecca, he practiced, he preached a different kind of Islam. But he went when he went to Medina, he did Hijra to Medina, and he became a leader of a huge army. He became more strong. Things started to change. Did Islam in the beginning, did Islam, was it spread by the truth or by preaching? No. It was spread by the sword. Even the scholars will admit that. They cannot lie about it. Right? And they, if they lie, they are nothing but hypocrites and liars. Right? They are nothing but hypocrites. They call their own prophet a liar. Right? Muhammad did not spread Islam because of the truth. Islam did not grow because of the truth. Islam grew because of the sword. And that's how Islam began. Right? Welcome everybody. God bless you. We just started. Let everybody know that we are live. For some reason, we don't have a huge number today. What's, I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe it's early or maybe late in some countries. I don't know. Maybe, uh, you know, I know it's still early in Europe and America. But, you know, maybe some people will join later. Anyway, we cannot force people to be here with us. But thank you for being here. Without you, we cannot do this, guys. Please invite smash the like button subscribe and let us start muslims when they come to our countries any muslim they will show you how much they love the jews they will tell you how much they love the christians and the atheists how much they love the gay people right yeah muslim mean how much they love dogs especially black dogs how much they love to eat bacon, wine, drink wine and beer. No, actually, they hate all of that. They hate you. They hate your civilization here in the West. They hate your Western culture, your traditions here in the West. They hate maybe America. They hate uh, the UK. They hate Germany. They hate the West. And they hate you, but they love to complain about Islamophobia. You're an Islamophobe. They are the ones who are the real phobes. They are the ones who are suffering from phobia. And they are such hypocrites that they are calling us Islamophobes. Yeah, and of course they hate each other. I mean, look at the Shia and the Sunnah. The moment Muhammad dies, uh, right? Muslims start to kill each other left and right for power. Right? Aisha and Ali went on each other's thro throats, right? Have you heard of the Battle of the Camel? Have you heard of it? What about the, uh, the Battle of Safin? More than 100,000 Muslims died. And th these are the first generation of Muslims, man. Can you imagine? The first generation of Muslims... They went at each other's throat and 100,000 Muslims died. They were butchered. They were killed each other. Almost all of the four caliphates, the first four caliphates were killed right? by Muslims. By you, by Muslims. Uthman was butchered. They grabbed his beard. The Muslims grabbed his beard. And one of them even said... Uh, I'm going to stab him. And he stabbed Uthman, right? The third cal caliph. They stabbed him with, uh, he, with arrows. And the arrows went in his ear and it came out of the other, way, other side. And the guy said, he stabbed him nine times. I, get, I kid you not. The Muslim, look how, and they, they always say, radiallahu anhum, right? The Sahaba, radiallahu anhum. As if they are basically the saints on earth. But they used to kill each other left and right. These are the first generation of Muslims, guys. Can you imagine? So where's the love among themselves? He stabbed Uthman, the killer, the murderer. He stabbed Uthman, a Muslim. Nine times he said, six stabs are for me, for my own, you know, to satisfy my anger. And three stabs are for Allah. 
I mean, it's in the Islamic books, right? This is the history of Islam. They killed Ali, they killed, oh, they killed all of them. They killed the sons of Ali, and that's, and uh, you know, Islam is the truth, brother. I mean, the Sunni Muslims, they love the Sahaba, and the Sahaba were nothing but murderers, right? Anyway, let us continue, guys. Look at this. I found this uh, commentary by Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani in Fath al-Bari. Guys, Fath al-Bari is basically a commentary book by Ibn Hajar. He comments on hadiths, especially on uh, Sahih al-Bukhari, right? That's his, special, his specialty. Commentary in his Fath al-Bari, that's the book, Fath al-Bari by Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. Look what he's saying or he's, he's mentioning. This is the Prophet of Islam, right? He's quoting the Prophet of Islam. I disown every Muslim who settles among the mushrikeen. And he's giving, for example, his commentary on this hadith. Let me give you the hadith. So he's giving, for example, his commentary on hadith like that, Sunnah uh, Daud. And this hadith is mentioned everywhere from the mouth of Muhammad. Muhammad said, I disown every Muslim who settles among the mushrikeen. Now here's the one million dollar question. What are Muslims doing in London? What are Muslims doing in the United States? What are Muslims doing in the Western countries? If Muhammad said, I disown any Muslim, every Muslim who settles among the mushrikeen. In the Western countries, for example. So you see how Muslims are nothing but hypocrites? They are calling their prophet a liar, a deceiver, when they go to Muslim to, to non-Muslim lands and settle there. Can you imagine? Can you imagine they are going against the Sunnah of Muhammad? Yeah, and Mushrikeen guys are basically the ones who associate partners with Allah. Let's say the Christians, for example, right? The Christians. What a disaster, man. <laughs> what a disaster. That's a disaster, Muslims. You see, you are, ya Muslimin, you are hypocrites. Antum munafiqun. Anta munafiq, ya akhi, al Muslim. Anta munafiq ibn munafiq. When you go to London, when you go to the UK, when you go to Germany, when you go to, to the Netherlands, to, the, to Belgium, all the Western countries, to the United States, to Canada. You are nothing but munafiqun because your prophet said, I disown every Muslim who settles among the mushrikeen. Well, you are disowned by your own prophet. Congratulations. You are basically out of Islam. So, uh, Christians, I want to ask you to use this arguments against the Muslims who always cry when they are in the world, like, like Mimi Hijab. Uh, like Ali Da'wah, like uh, Sister Fifi, Sister Farida, they always cry, you Christians, this and that. I mean, who forced the sword of, of Muhammad on your neck to come to our Western countries? What are you doing here? While well, your prophet said, I disown any Muslim who settles among the mushrikeen. What are you doing in Birmingham? What are you doing in London? Yeah, Muslimin. What are you doing at Speaker's Corner? Right, uh, Sister K. Uh, Sister Hatun, if I were you, I would use this Fath al-Bari comment by Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani often with them. When, they, when you hear them cry about the West and whatnot, and you Christians, you are Islamophobe, tell them, your prophet said, I will disown you, ya Muslim, if you settle among the mushrikeen. We are mushrikeen. What are you doing among us? Your prophet would disown you. Do you see it? So you see how they are nothing but hypocrites. And that's basically the topic of today, right? Showing you the hypocrisy of the Muslims in Islam. They go against what their prophet said. I hope you can take a screenshot and use it. Sister K, Sister K, if you're still with us, I'm not sure if she's still with us. Please use this. Use this. I don't see Christians using this arguments against the Muslims who are always crying here in the West, in, on speaker's corner and whatnot. 
put this put these words that Muhammad said in their faces. You are a munafiq. What are you doing here? According to your prophet, you should not be among us. Use the words of Muhammad against them, guys. Hey, so Christians, please learn how to debate Muslims and learn how not to debate Muslims. Right? Anyway, let us continue. Muslims, why do you have to lie? Why do you have to lie? Why do you need to call your prophet a liar? Why do you lie to yourselves and to ourselves? Why are, why are you lying to us and to yourselves, ya Muslimin? Why? Look what one of the Sahaba used to say. Taqiyya. We smile in the face of some people, although our hearts curse them. And that was Abu Darda. One of the giants in Islam, right? Pure taqiyya. This is basically the description of taqiyya, guys, in Islam. We smile in the face of some people, although our hearts curse them. Right? When they are not in power, when they don't have the upper hand, right? When they don't have the upper hand, they will use taqiyya. Because they are weak. They are weak. Yes, it's sahih, AJ. That's the commentary on this hadith, for example. I gave you the link, Sunnah Nabi Daud, right? This is basically one of the commentaries on such a hadith. I gave you the link. So, Ibn Hajar, a giant in Islam, right, guys? Ibn Hajar, you see it? Ibn Hajar, a giant in Islam, he is the one giving his tafsir about such a hadith. Ibn Hajar al in Fath al Bari. You should use it and you should take a screenshot, guys. All right? So, let us continue. And I'm going to teach you guys about the three stages of jihad, for example. The three stages of jihad. All right? The three stages of jihad. I mentioned this topic in an earlier live show. And YouTube gave me strike for it. Can you imagine? Muslims were so triggered that I was explaining the three stages of jihad. Finally, for the very first time, I mentioned it. And they took my <laughs> live show down because the Muslims, they knew I am sh exposing the true face of Islam. They mass flagged the video and uh, the live show went down. Shariatub, yes. Shariatub is always there to com to comply, right? To listen to what the Muslims have to say, and they will, Shariatub will always obey, right? Who is the idiot of on the screen? He's a nice jihadi boy, Abdullah Zubair. That's his name, Abdullah Zubair. Look what he said: Jihad will continue until all the Hindus, the Christians, the Buddhists, the atheists are what? Kissed? No, no. Uh, hugged. A kiss on the cheek? No, it says killed. That's what a true Muslim would have said. A true, at least this guy, this Abdullah Zubair, is honest. He is showing you the true face of Islam. And that's what Islam is all about. Again, jihad will continue. Until all the Hindus, Christians, Buddhists, atheists, all of them are killed. Your secularism and tolerance cannot change our ideology. The Muslim ideology. Quran does not permit survival of non-Muslims. That's what Abdullah Zubair said. End quote. At least he is honest about Islam. Not these hypocrites here in the West. These wannabe Muslims who want to sugarcoat. The, you know, they want to sh uh, tell you about the, the beautiful side of Islam, which is abrogated, by the way, by chapter nine. Surah Al-Qital, the chapter of the sword, the chapter of fighting, chapter 9, abrogated more than 120 peaceful ayahs, Meccan ayahs. Remember, you can basically cut the Quran in half, right? You have the Meccan when Muhammad was in Mecca, and you have the other half when Muhammad was in Medina. The Medina chapters, especially chapter 9, Surah At-Tawbah, chapter 9, abrogated Almost all the ayahs that are talking about peace in, when Muhammad was in Mecca without any power. But when Muhammad went to Medina, he abrogated the peaceful ayahs. Right? 
when you as a Muslim, when you have the upper hand, when you have an army, you don't need to obey the laws of, let's say, the United States or United Kingdom. You conquer the country and then you implement Sharia and you force the mafia protection money on the Jews and the Christians, which is jizya. Right? Guys, I hope yeah, that you can download my today's live show or at least allow it to go viral. I want you guys to share today's live show. It's really damaging. Here is an explanation of the three stages, guys. And I hope you can take a screenshot and always remind yourself when Muslims love to tell you about the beautiful side, the, 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 the cute side of Islam, always remind yourself what the three stages of jihad are. Right? The three stages of jihad. Stage one. Please focus, guys. Don't allow any Muslim in the live chat to distract you. Ad we have admins for that. Admins will take care of it. Stage one. Muslims are the minority. Let's say, uh, you know, some city or something. They, don't, they have only a small number. They must obey the laws of the Western country they live in. Taqiyah mode is on, right? Taqiyah mode is on. They start to lie. They love to tell you about the beautiful side of Islam, which is abrogated. Right? They are the minority. Let's say if you go to a city like uh, Dearborn, Michigan, where <laughs> the population are, the majority are the Muslims, that's stage two. Look, Muslims are the majority in some neighborhoods. You, are, you have some, I know that you have some neighborhoods in London you are not even uh, you as as a as a Christian or a blonde woman or whatever. You go there, you get you get scared. They will come at you, right? You're you're terrified to enter those neighborhoods. Even the police won't dare to enter such neighborhoods, right? They are the majority in such a neighborhood or city or community, but still they don't have the upper hand in the country. So they still must obey the laws of the Western country they live in. Right? Still, taqiyah mode is on. Right? Still, the taqiyah mode is on. So, in stage one and stage two, taqiyah mode is on. You see it, right? And I'm not sure, again, for the people who just joined, I'm not sure why Muslims are living among the mushrikeen, let's say in, in, in the United States or United Kingdom. You remember what Muhammad said? Muhammad said, I disown every Muslim who settles among the mushrikeen. So I'm not sure what the Muslims, these hypocrite Muslims are doing in the United States or United Kingdom, for example, right? Anyway, now let us go to the final stage, which is stage three. Take a screenshot, guys. Yes, exactly, AJ. The, uh, stage two, they, you know, they will try to form gangs and they will harass you. Uh, they even, you know, uh, create a, a group of uh, Sharia police. You know, I, I've heard before, you know, in, in some cities, I think it was in London, I'm not sure. In some neighborhoods, they even go, uh, you know, when, when it's, let's say, 10 o'clock in the evening, they go on the street and they say, and they force people to, to go to their homes. What are you doing outside, right? So if we go to stage three, look what happens now. Muslims in stage three, they have the upper hand and they already conquered that land and they implemented Sharia law and started to force jizya, which is nothing but mafia protection money on the Christians. You don't pay jizya? Either you leave or we take your women as sex slaves, your daughters, your sisters, your wives, your mothers. If you still don't want to leave, we're going to cut off your head or else. And then you see the taqiyah mode is off. No need more for lying anymore. Remember, war is deceit, right? How, how many times have I told you th through my live shows, through the many years that we are doing this, Islam is nothing but jihad. Jihad is always on their mind, right? And we know that war is deception. You see, taqiyah, taqiyah. But in the final stage, the taqiyah, they don't need to use lie anymore. And they going to use the same Islam that Muhammad implemented when he was in Medina. He had the upper hand. He was basically the king. 
He implemented the Sharia law and things started to change. This is the true face of Islam, guys. This is the true face of Islam. Stage one, two, and three. Please always remind yourselves about these three stages, right? These three stages. The three stages of jihad, right? They will kill you. They will force jizya on you. You don't pay jizya, it's over. They will take your women as sex slaves. They will take your beloved sisters, daughters, mothers as sex slaves, and they will behead you if you don't want to pay jizya, right? Wake up, uh, Christians. Please wake up. Stop believing in the lies and the deception of Muslims. You need to wake up. It's 2021. Learn about the true face of Islam, Christians. Don't allow any Muslim to deceive you. Don't allow any Muslim to deceive you anymore. Please wake up. Else, you're still living under that stone. Wake up. Now, here's an example, guys, from the Quran. This is the same chapter that I was talking about, Surah at tawbah Do we have, by the way, any Muslim? Is there any Muslim? Let me open Skype. Let's see. Hmm. Is there any Muslim? Before we continue, is there any Muslim, guys? Is there any Muslim? My Skype is open. No Muslims? Uh, cell, cell, uh, cell, call me, cell. My Skype is open. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Again, the Rob Christian, without separation. That means can provide my Skype ID in the live chat. Any Abdul? Any guest? Any guest who dares to say Rob Christian your line? Sal, uh, Sal, uh, please don't be scared. I'm not going to bite. Call me. We are live. We are live, baby. We are live. I challenge any sheikh, any imam, any ustaz, any cute Muslim who wants to tell us about how beautiful Islam is. Come and teach us how beautiful Islam is. I want to have a discussion with you. Any Abdul? No Abdul? Hmm. All right. Here is Surah at tawbah guys. The chapter of the sword. That's another nickname for it. Surah at tawbah The chapter of the sword. The chapter of fighting. All right. I love the nickname, the chapter of the sword, because it is the chapter of the sword. And this chapter, guys, abrogated, like I said, at least, at least 120 peaceful Meccan ayahs. When Muhammad was in Mecca, he had no army. This chapter, when he was in Medina, he abrogated those verses. Right? This chapter. Let us read chapter 9, ayah 28. Ya ladina amanu. إِنَّمَا الْمُشْرِكُونَ نَجِسٌ إِلَى آخر الآية. We have a Muslim? Yes, you're live on air. Hello? Hello? What happened? I, th I think uh, he forgot to say inshallah, guys. I think he forgot to say inshallah. Let me call him back. Truther Zero, that's his name. Okay. Troll, I think. See? A troll. <sighs> Story of my life. Story of my life, brother. Why Muslims are so scared? Cute, you're a cute Muslim. Cute, cutie pie. What's going on? La, ya muslimin. La, he's, he's, look guys, he's active. <laughs> he 
is active. Let me try again. Ah, uh, brother, I pick up the phone, brother. Coward. A little coward. Let me go sit, go sit down. Go sit down. Sit down, kid. Sit down. Waste of time. Guys, Surah the Tawbah, Ayah 28. All people who believe, the Muslims, the polytheists, al mushrikeen al mushrikuna the polytheists are utterly filthy. So after this year, do not let them come near the sacred mosque. You see, filthy. You're filthy nages. As a Christian, they call us mushrikeen because we worship Jesus. You're a mushrik, ya akhi. You worship Jesus. You are nages. You're filthy. See? It's even much worse than filthy, right? Look. Utterly filthy. You So you have an idea why they put... Uh, uh, roadblocks, right? When you go to Mecca, you as a Najis, you're not allowed to enter Mecca. But who's the Najis? You and me, a Muslim. Is your prophet a Najis who was uh, telling you to wash inside the, the well of Buddha where there are dogs and filthy rags in it and uh, the menstruation blood of women? Who is the Najis? You or uh, us, yeah, Muslim? Your prophet was drinking. The Sahaba were drinking. They put word, uh, the water in their nose and mouth. Of that f disgusting well. Small well. So is the Nejis. Anyway. You know. I mean who is the one who is the Nejis? Us or you? So after this year. Do not let them come near the sacred mosque. Which is uh, basically Mecca. right? The sacred mosque in Mecca. Masjid al-Haram. Right? Al-Masjid al-Haram. And if you feel poverty. So here comes the. Here comes the context, guys. Muslims always cry about context. These, these hypocrite Muslims, they always cry about context. Okay, let us go to the context of this ayah. They always say, this is, this, these are the verses of war. No, this is, has nothing to do with war. War is already over. Muhammad already conquered here. The war is over. This is after the war. And if you fear poverty, ya Muslimin, so don't let uh, the, the, the Christians, the Jews, the pagans... Come near Masjid al-Haram. But if you fear that you're going to go bankrupt, let's say you have a business. You know, from that moment on, Christians were not allowed to come in inside Mecca. Uh, uh, Jews were not allowed to be in Mecca. And Muhammad expelled the Jews and the Christians. Right? Don't worry, be happy. Allah will make you wealthy with his grace, if he wills. Now, what is the solution that Muhammad had for the Muslims who were afraid to go bankrupt? I mean, maybe you have a business with the Christians, with the with the with the Asfar, Beni Asfar, what they call the Blondies, right? The Blondies, Beni Asfar, the sons of the Blondies. Those are the uh, Byzantine Christians, right? The Orthodox Christians in the seventh century. Let's see the solution. The solution is in the next ayah, and this is the famous ayah, guys, of Jizya. Right? This is the context. This is the true context. Here Muhammad comes with a solution. Watch. To the rest of the ayah. Here it says fight. No, it doesn't say fight. It says qatilu. It doesn't say haribu. It doesn't say that RC. Have you watched my remix that uh, Sheikh Umut made about me, guys? It doesn't say that RC. Yeah, this is one of the uh, examples why. Qatilu, guys. Qatilu. Qatilu. Versus. Versus. Haribu. Right? Haribu means war. To, to do war. But Qatilu means to kill. You see it? So it says Qatilu, not Haribu. So kill the people of the book. The Jews and the Christians who do not accept faith in Allah in the last day. Well, uh, I don't accept Allah. I don't accept your prophet, ya Muslimin. I think your prophet is a prophet of Satan. And we proved it in one of my last, latest short videos, right? That I made about Musnad Ahmad. Muhammad, I think Muhammad is a false prophet. So that means you must kill me. That's what I am saying. And who do not treat as forbidden what is forbidden by Allah. Blah, 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 blah. Right? And... Who do not follow the true religion. That is Islam. Well I don't follow Islam. So you must kill me. 
Remember what, the, what this idiot said? Jihad will continue until all the Hindus, Christians, Buddhists, atheists are killed. At least he is honest about the Quran. Qatilu. Kill. Why are you lying Muslims in your false translation? Why? Anyway. What else is new? Without lies, Islam dies. <laughs> right? Until they pay the jizya. Al jizya. With their own hands, with humiliation. Any Muslim who will dare to say jizya, brother, jizya, al jizya, it's a tax. Well, I challenge you to tell me if you live, let's say, in the United States, you live in the United Kingdom, in England, when you pay tax, you pay tax and you are humiliated by the government? Are you getting humiliated by the government? Look, al jizya an yadin wa hum sagirun. The word is to be littled. To be humiliated. Right? You must be humiliated because you are not a Muslim. Muslims will humiliate you. They will take all of your money from you and they will humiliate you. That's what jizya is all about. That's why they implemented jizya. And guys, guys, I can even tell you what the scholars say about this ayah. You know why they force jizya? And it's a, you know, Muslims always say it's only a small amount. You filthy liars. You know how huge kind of money jizya was? They forced jizya on the Christians, guys, let's say, to force them to go bankrupt, you know, for them to have only two options left, either leave the country or become a Muslim. You, don't, you, you become a Muslim, you say the shahada, you become a Muslim, they will, jizya will be removed from you. They lie to you, Christians, and they say it's only a small amount. No, jizya was implemented to force you to become a Muslim or leave the country that was conquered by the Muslims. They lie without any shame, guys, about jizya. Because remember, they are probably in, in stage one or stage two, right? When they make videos about this. You know, jizya is a small amount, brother. It's even more a sl small amount than, uh, than zakat. You see, they lie here in, in stage one and two. But when it's stage three, <laughs> they will tell you the true meaning of jizya, right? It's punishment for not being a Muslim. It's punishment for not being a Muslim. Mafia protection money until you go bankrupt as a Christian and you will only have two options. Either leave your own country that is conquered by the Muslims, or you become a Muslim. You don't want to pay jizya, okay, I'm going to rape your wives, while you can watch, as a Muslim, you can watch, right? You rape the women of the Christians, they can watch, the men can watch, humiliate them, rape their women, and then kill the men, after the rape. Right? Any Mohammedan who dares to call me? I challenge you to say, Rob Christian, you're lying about the context of these two ayahs. Chapter 9, ayah 28, and chapter 9, ayah 29. I challenge any sheikh, any imam to come up and say, Rob Christian, you're lying. Is that a fair challenge, guys? Is that a fair challenge? I challenge any sheikh or any imam to say, Rab Kishin, you're lying. So I can force the tafsir in his face. And we will go to the context. I already explained it to you from the Quran. But we can go to the tafsir, any tafsir, no problem. We can go to Ibn Kathir if you like. I hope Ibn Kathir is good enough for you guys. <laughs> no Muhammadan? Why is that? Ah, because you agree with me, right? Yeah, Muslims. That's why you don't dare to call me, because you agree with me, right? But uh, to the Christians who do not know about the three stages of Islam, of jihad, you can lie and say, you know, Islam is cute, Islam is peace, brother. It, Islam means peace, brother. How many times have you heard, guys? Islam means peace. Yeah, we know how much peace. I mean, peace is Islam leaves, right? The religion of pieces, yes. Right? But when the gloves are off, the gloves are off, and taqiyah mode is off, then we see the real true face of Islam in front of us. Right? Yeah, Muslim. You must force the jizya on the Christians and the Jews. People of the book, 
the Jews and the Christians, especially the Christians. Uh, you know, they. I don't think the Jews uh, will survive. Right? I don't think the Jews will survive. So you must pay jizya, mafia protection money, and you must be belittled. Sagirun, humiliation. They call it tax. How is it? How does this tax? When you pay taxes in the United States, yeah, Muslim. Let's say you live in New York or D.C. When you pay taxes, you are humiliated by the United States government. No, you don't. Why are you lying? Why do you call it a tax? Filthy liars. Shame on you. But we know you Muslims have no shame. You have no honor and you have no dignity. This is why you follow the most obvious fake prophet in history, Muhammad. Right? Now, guys, I want to share something else with you. And I'm going to expose, because that's the topic of today, the hypocrisy of the Muslims. You know, when we talk about God, the God of the Bible, and you, everybody, every Christian should know the story about when Moses went and then God appeared in the burning bush. You know the story of God Appearing in the burning bush, right? Talking to Moses. Moses, this is holy ground. Remove your shoes. Remove your sandals. Now, I have a question to our brothers and sisters in Christ. I hope everybody is listening. When God appeared in the bush, did God change? Did his nature change? Did God's nature change when he appeared in the burning bush? Or is he still the same God? Can... Can God do whatever he likes? Is our God limited? No, God does not change. He is not limited. He can do whatever he likes. He is powerful. But the God of Islam, Muslims will love to cut off his legs from underneath him. They love to mutilate him, cut off his limbs, his hands, his feet, his arms. That's how a tiny little puny false god Allah is. They say, no, astaghfirullah. Allah does not enter his creation. I mean, guys, this is why I love one of my heroes of his time, John of Damascus. John of Damascus, if you look him up, and we shared the video many times over in the past, John of Damascus said, you Muslims, and he was the apologist of his time, right? He's one of my heroes, to be honest with you. John of Damascus, Look up the name, John of Damascus, who lived in the 7th century, right? He said, the Muslims, you mutilate Allah when you say that Allah cannot. Allah cannot. Allah is the cannot God of Islam. Allah, a.k.a. cannot. That's the God of Islam. Allah, a.k.a. cannot. Right? He cannot enter. He is not powerful enough to do what he wants. Muslims need to limit Allah. They need to uh, put restriction on Allah. This is how they want to tell us about their puny, not all-powerful Allah, who is nobody else than Satan in disguise, in the form of an idol, the idol of the Quraysh. The baik Allahumma la baik la sharika. Like that's what the, the Quraysh uh, of Mecca used to say. Right? And they worship the same Allah, the same idol, the same stone idol, Samad Allah. Allah had m many nicknames. One of the nicknames was Samad. One of the nicknames was Baal. One of the nicknames was uh, uh, Sin. Sin. And they called up, yeah, Sin. It's one of the chapters of the Quran. What about Almas? Yeah, Almas. Sin. Almas. Yeah, and San. Allah has many nicknames. He's a human. He's, he is sucking. He's everything. Because he's Satan. That's why he has so many nicknames. So, the Muslims always say, you know, when God uh, comes in, uh, uh, when he takes on a flesh body in the shape of Jesus, is God changing? No, of course not. It's, it's the same God. God can do whatever he likes. But in Islam, Allah is limited. But wait, Muhammad stole the same story and it's in the Quran. <laughs> Muhammad stole the story from the Bible, and he plagiarized it and put it in the Quran. And Muslims have a problem to deal with. The same story is in the Quran. <laughs> Look at these hypocrites. You see why I brought up today's live show, guys? The topic of today's live show. The hypocrisy of Muslims in Islam in 2021. The same story is in the Quran. Watch. 
Guys, take notes and let me give you the links to these ayahs that we're going to mention. This is Surah at taha chapter 20, ayahs 9 all the way to, let's say, 13. We have a caller. Yes, hello? Hello? Yes, hello? How are you? I'm good. Are you a Muslim, my friend? Yes. Okay. Are you a Sunni Muslim? What are you exactly? What sect do you Sunni. follow? Sorry? Sunni. Sunni. What? Sunni. Sunni. Okay, you're Sunni. Can What, what can I call you? What's your name? Um, Ahmad. You're Ahmad. Have we spoken before? I think I've heard your voice before. Have I spoken no. to you before? No. 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 You no. s you because your sound, uh, your, your voice is familiar to me. Anyway, what do you want to say? Go ahead. Hello? Hello? What? What did uh, you say? Uh, what? what are you say? You, uh, did you call me to waste my time or are you going to speak before the rapture, dude? <laughs> yeah, okay, what do you want to say? <laughs> kid, kid, idiot. Kid and children, man. See? Let me block his uh, big nose. Go sit in the corner, idiot. You see, these are the Muslims who cannot handle the truth. They don't have any argument. They know I am showing the true face of Islam. The only thing they can do is mock us, try to troll us. That's it. Idiot. I know I, you must be triggered. One triggered Mohammedan to you result to such childish tactics because you know you can't refute us. I really, you know, Muslims, I'm really embarrassed about the Muslims that you are in 2021. You have nothing. You have nothing. You are acting like small children because you have nothing. Muhammad would turn himself inside his grave right now. That's how embarrassed Muhammad would be about you Muslims in 2021. Shame on you for calling yourself human beings. Shame on you. But we know you Muslims of today, you have no shame. This is why you still uh, follow Muhammad. The most obvious fake prophet, the pedophile, the disgusting evil son of Satan, Muhammad, the black stone kissing Muhammad, an idol worshiper. That's what you are Muslims. يا مسلمين لا ما عندكم لا شرف ولا أي شيء وينك يا مسلم وينك فرجيني عرض كتافك يلا فرجيني عرض كتافك if you think you have the courage and the knowledge to refute me show me the broad of your shoulders call me if you think you have what it takes stop sending me your kids you see what kind of joke Islam uh, has become, guys? Islam became a meme, but the Muslims, they don't realize it yet. Islam is nothing but a meme in 2021, guys. Lord have mercy. Guys, let us continue. You see, again, the same story that the Bible mentions, God appearing in the burning bush, talking to Moses. It's in the Quran. <laughs> Look. Chapter 20, Surah Ta, chapter 20, ayah 9. And to the rest of the ayahs. Has the story of Moses come to you? Allah, Allah is saying, has the story of Moses come to you? <laughs> when he saw a fire, he said to his family, You wait here. I've seen a fire, Moses is saying. I've seen a fire. I may happily be able to bring an ember from it or find direction by the fire. And if we continue reading, look what it says. When he approached this, when he approached the fire, same story from the Bible. When he approached, the voice called out. Now, who is that voice? Oh, Moses, I am really your Lord, Allah. I am Allah. Brother, it's me, Allah. <laughs> but wait, you Muslims always tell us Allah does not enter his creation. But Allah is speaking from the burning bush. <laughs> It doesn't say that, RC. <laughs> oh boy, it's in the Quran. So who is the one talking from the fire? Allah's fire? 
Muslims have a problem with Jesus, who is the eternal word of God. God himself, who became flesh. You don't have a problem with Allah being fire? Allah is a fire. He is the one saying, O Moses, I'm really your Lord. You have a problem with Allah being the fire, being inside the fire. But you don't have, sorry, you don't have a problem with it because the Quran mentioned it. But you have a problem with Jesus being God in the flesh. When, when God came into the flesh, did he change? No, he did not change. He only took a human flesh. His divinity never changed. Yes, Jesus is 100% divine. He's 100% human. But did his divine nature change? Of course not. Did Allah change when he went, became fire? Huh? He's the one talking from the fire, yeah, Muslimin. So how dare you to lie to us and say that Allah does not enter his creation. Who is the one talking then? Jibreel? Does Jibreel say, I am your Lord? O Moses, I am your Lord, Allah? Inni ana rabbuka? Does Jibreel say, I am your Lord? No, this is Allah talking. Right? I am your Lord. Inni ana rabbuka. So Allah is speaking from the fire. And they don't say, uh, they, they dare to lie to you and say, well, Allah does not enter his creation. But clearly Allah is inside the fire. Why are you lying, ya Muslimin? Is this, uh, maybe the ayah is da'if, brother, maybe the ayah is da'if. <laughs> oh boy, maybe the ayah is da'if. Right? Allah does not enter his creation, brother. Allahu Akbar! Pfft. Well, clearly Allah does enter his creation. You see it? It's in the Quran. Here is more. Again, the same story, Moses, Musa. And when he reached the fire, in chapter 28, ayah 30, and when he reached the fire, he was called, he, Moses, was called out to, from the right side of the valley in the blessed field, from the tree. Now this time Allah speaks from the tree. Uh, I think Allah is a shajara, right? Allah is a tree. Allah of Islam is a tree. Allah is now a tree, guys. First he was fire, now he's a tree. Allah is a tree, Muslims. You have a problem with God coming into the flesh. But you don't have a problem Allah being a tree. What is more, what is more favorable in the eyes of God? A human being or a tree? Why you have a problem with God coming into the flesh, but you don't have a problem with your fake Allah becoming a tree? From the tree. Does it say from the tree? Does it say from the tree? Mina shajara. Mina shajara. Mina shajarati. From the tree. Does it say that in the Arabic? Yes, it says that. Here. From the tree. These two words. From the tree. But they love to tell you and lie to you, Christians here in the West. Allah does not enter his creation. Well, the Quran say Allah has entered his creation. Allah is talking from the tree. Do you see it? Yeah, maybe the same tree became a... Yes, exactly, Sherlock Holmes. Now I understand why your name is Sherlock Holmes. The tree became paper, brother. And the goat ate uh, the tree, brother. The goat ate Allah himself, brother. Maybe it was the, the same... Uh, tree that uh, uh, Aisha, uh, the verses that Aisha used to uh, have under the pillow. The goat came and flipped the dead Muhammad and ate the tree, I mean the Allah. The goat ate Allah himself. Brother, sister. Guys, by the way, for the people who maybe just jumped in and you think you missed too much, don't worry, the admins will provide the timestamps from now on, guys. Our admins are always providing the timestamps to our live shows. So when you miss a couple of topics that we already discussed or mentioned, you can go back after the live show and the admins will provide the timestamps to make it easy for you guys. All right? Don't worry. Be happy. All right? So again, Allah is a fire. Allah is a tree. What's left? Why do you have a problem with our holy God who is unlimited, not as limited as you want to paint Allah to be, he is not uh, limited. He can do whatever he likes. If God wants to come inside the burning 
bush, he can do that. Our God is powerful. Your Allah cannot. He is limited God. You love to mutilate Allah, right? And that's what John of Damascus, John Damascene said. That's his other nickname, John Damascene. And I love what he said in the 7th century about Islam and the Allah of Islam. You love to mutilate Allah. You love to tell us how puny, tiny your little God is who cannot. But the Quran, the Quran says something else. Here is more. So Allah is a fire. Allah is a tree. Here is, ah, wait, this is Allah, guys. This must be the tree. And why does Allah look like a snake, man? Allah looks like a snake tree. Maybe this is the snake tree. Uh, look at this proud Muhammad in Pakistan. I think he's a Pakistani. This is the tree. Allah himself, brother. We found Allah, guys. Allah is the tree. Tree. Allah is the tree. Tree. Allah is the tree. Tree. That same tree. In the Quran, chapter 28, ayah 30. 30. 30. <laughs> <sighs> oh boy. <laughs> Brother, sister. Allah is the same tree. This is a tree, guys. This is Allah himself. Anyway. Now, guys, here is more. I mean, we already gave you two ayahs. What about, what about the third? <laughs> Does Allah really enter his creation or not? According to the Quran. Chapter 7, ayah 143. Allah manifests himself on the mountain. Allah manifests himself on the mountain. So the Allah did appear on the mountain? Yes. Look, chapter 7, Surah Al-Araf, ayah 143. Ayah 143. When Moses arrived at the appointed time and his Lord spoke to him, he said, O Lord, reveal yourself to me. Allah, show yourself to me. That I may see you. Moses saying. You cannot see me. Allah saying. He said. But look at the mountain. Brother. Look at the mountain. Allah saying. If it, re if it remains firm in its place. You may be. May then behold me. You may then see me. But where you just told him. Look at the munafiq Allah. Look at the liar Allah. You cannot see me. Then Allah changes his mind. He says yes you can see me. Are you going to show yourself or not? First you tell poor the, Mo the Islamic Moses, you cannot see me. And then suddenly you change your mind. You say, yes, you can see me. Look at the mountain, you'll see me. But wait, Muslims always say, Allah does not enter his creation. What is it, Allah? Please make your mind. Please, Allah, make up your mind. Are you going to show yourself or are you going not to show yourself? Any, miny, mo. Should I show myself or should I not show myself? This is Allah, guys. Allah is talk talking to himself. Shall I show myself or should I not show myself? And anyway, look what it says here. فَلَمَّا تَجَلَّى رَبَّهُ لِجَبَلِي uh Oh, when Allah manifested himself on the mountain. Look what it says. But when his Lord appeared on the mountain. Uh oh, again Allah entering his creation. We showed you from three different chapters already. From three different chapters, we showed you that Allah does enter creation. He does enter creation. Allah becomes physical. How dare you Muslims to lie to us? How dare you? Shame on you for lying about your Allah. You don't have a problem with Allah being a fire. You don't have a problem with Allah being a tree. Allah the tree. You don't have a problem with Allah being the mountain, but you have a problem with our God entering the flesh. What is more worthy in the eyes of God? A human being or a tree, stones, a mountain, fire? What is more worthy in the eyes of God? Hmm? Yeah, Muslim. You see how, what kind of hypocrites they are? They lie about the Quran left and right. Just to lie to the Christians in their debates. Hypocrites. Sons of muta. That's what Muslims are. This is why I don't have any respect for Muslims who lie about the true face of Islam. I have no respect for you. Respect must be earned. When you 
want to debate me, and when you want to have a discussion with me, and you're going to be honest, I know there are honest Muslims. I don't, guys, I don't call all Muslims sons of Muta. Only those ones like me, me, Fifi, those liars and deceivers. All is outside of creation. No, we showed you from three different chapters that Allah does enter his creation. You see, I have no respect for Muslims who want to lie to my face. Been there, done that, and got myself the t-shirt. It's not working with me. All right? It's not working with me. Been there, done that, and got myself that t-shirt. It's not working. This is 2021. Taqiyya is not working. We are becoming immune for your lies, for your taqiyya and makr, your deception. The same makr that your Allah, the best of khairul makarin, the best of deceivers, was using. Chapter 3, I have 54. Allah, khairul makarin. Allah, the best of deceivers. Yeah. When you follow such a God, false, puny, tiny God, that you love to limit, a.k.a. the cannot, Allah cannot, you know, then you are a deceiver yourself when you follow such a deceiver. One of the admins guys asked me to mention chapter 9, ayah 31. Someone sent me a message, one of the admins. He said, please Rob, I know many people are watching you know, you need to talk about these ayahs more often. I said, okay, no problem. Do we have any Muhammadan guys? Is there any Muhammadan in the live chat? I don't have any missed calls. Only that troll that I blocked. No missed calls? Why? We have more than 200 people watching and not one Muhammadan dares to call me? That's a shame. That's a shame. Yeah. Just watch, guys. Admins, admins, and, and our brothers and sisters in the live chat. Just watch. When I close my my live show, when I wrap up today's live show, in the comment section, they're going to be heroes. But now they are like puppies. Meow. What happened, brother? Meow. Brother, meow. Now let us get, take a deep dive in chapter 9, ayah 31. Would who, buddy, who, who else done? When you do a deep dive. Deep dive. What? When you do a deep dive. What, what? When you do a deep dive. What, what? When you do a deep dive. I'm a scuba diver. When you do a deep dive. What, what, what? When you do a deep dive. I'm let us take diver. a deep dive. When you do a deep dive. I'm a scuba diver. Things get very, very awkward and difficult. When you do a deep dive, would yes, a kind of scuba diver. When you do a deep dive, I'm, 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 I'm a scuba diver. Things get very, very awkward and difficult. We are more than happy to go to go diving anywhere. If I were to give you a blank muscle, uh, uh, let's not. I'm a scuba diver. We are more than happy to go to go diving anywhere. If I were to give you a blank muscle, uh, 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 let's not. not uh, let's, you, you're pushing me. I'm a scuba diver. We are more than happy to go to go diving anywhere. If I were to give you a blank muscle, the standard narrative has holes in it. That's what I'm going to say. If I were to give you a blank muscle. Leave it at that, ya akhi. When you do a deep dive. I'm a scuba diver. When you do a deep dive. I'm a scuba diver. Things get very... Okay, that's it. <laughs> now guys, let us go <laughs> and take a deep dive with Yasser Qadi in chapter 9, I 31. <laughs> you like it? You like it? You like that mix, guys? I know that uh, our brother, Sheikh Umat, guys, subscribe to Sheikh Umat. He, I mean, his remixes, man, they are lit. Have you seen my, uh, the remix that I made about me? It's called, It Doesn't Say That RC by Sheikh Umad, featuring Zachary Knight. Have you seen it? Uh, that was lit, man. God bless you, uh, our dear friend and admin, our brother, an ex-Muslim who became a Christian, one of the admins, Sheikh Umad. Let's see. Surah at tawbah ayah 31. Let's take a deep dive featuring Yasser Qari. Attakhadu ahbarahum. We have a Muslim. Yes, hello. Fucking dumb bath, nigga. Oh, Zakarnaik. Is it Zakarnaik? Brada, is it Zakarnaik? Yes, Zakarnaik, motherfucker. 
guys, he was quoting his uh, son of Muta prophet. Same guy. Let me vlog this kid. He was quoting his uh, prophet, right? The Shia did, uh, I think the Shia, they did uh, Muta with his mother. This is why this boy, this little boy is triggered. We have only boy. Boy! You boy! You boy! Let us take a deep dive. You boy! In your Quran. Boy! Let us go. What does that mean? They have taken, the Christians, they have taken their rabbis and their monks as gods, besides Allah and what? Al Masih, the son of Maryam. Al Masih ibn Maryam. Al Masih ibn Maryam. And they have to lie in the translation, putting words that are between brackets, which the Arabic doesn't say, to sugarcoat and lie. Where does it say also? I will give you. I will give you a million dollars, ya Muslimin, if you can show me the words also. No, it says they have taken their rabbis and monks. As gods, Arbab and as lords, as gods, beside Allah and the Messiah. That's what the Arabic is saying. Allah, what? This tiny little letter means end. What? What means end. Right? So Allah, who are the lords? Who are the lords? Who are the gods? Allah. And, and, al Messiah. So even the Quran, the evil satanic book, must admit that Jesus is God. He is one of the Arbab. Allah is Arb, uh, Rab number one, and the Al-Masih is Rab number two. So we have two lords in Islam, right? We have two gods in Islam. Allah and the Messiah. Oh boy. Here, this is the monks. And their scholars. Rahib, Rahib guys, Rahib means a monk. Rahib in the Arabic, Rahib means someone who is a monk. Okay? So they're scholars and monks. They're monks. This word here means monks. Right? This word means monks. So they have taken, we Christians, we don't take our rabbis and monks as, as gods. No, no, that's a lie. So Allah lies about, I mean Muhammad, there's nothing called Allah. Right? Muhammad lies about the Christians. Us, we never, were, have you ever seen a Christian who worships his rabbi or his monk? And since when do we have rabbis? It said scholars, it doesn't say even rabbis. How have you ever seen a Christian worshipping his monk or his scholar? No. So that's lie number one. But here at least Satan, I mean Muhammad and his Satan Allah, they, even in their satanic book, they must admit that Jesus is one of the Arbab besides Allah. Min dun Instead of Allah and the Messiah. Instead of Allah and the Messiah. That's what it says. As lords, instead of Allah and the Messiah. This part here. All right, and the word also between brackets, it's not in the Arabic, they are adding it. It's a lie, nothing but a lie. Again, so even the satanic book, which is the Quran, must admit that Jesus is Lord. Even this satanic book must. Confirm that our Messiah is Lord. What is more beautiful than that? This makes my job much easier as a Christian apologist. I am only reading it. I am only translating it word for word. But the Muslims, they don't dare to translate it the correct way. They have to lie. Because without lies, Islam dies. <laughs> Oh boy, any Muhammadan? Any Muhammadan? Mayday, mayday. 
any Mohammedan who has the courage and the knowledge to refute me, please be my guest. Any any guests? Do we have any guests, guys? And if that's not enough, guys, if that is not enough proof that Jesus is Lord in the Quran, what about chapter 29, Surah Al-Ankabut, the spider, the spider, Al-Ankabut, chapter 29, ayah 46. Let me give you this ayah, guys. This is one of the coffins on the faces of Muhammad. Uh, sorry, the coffin. This is one, one of the nails. Sorry, guys. This is one of the nails on the coffin of Muhammad. This is a nuclear bomb. This eye on itself is a nuclear bomb on the face of Islam and the Muslims. The hypocrite Muslims. Right? Hypocrite Muslims. Why? Here is why. Do not argue with the people of the book. Who are the people of the book, guys? Again, who are the people of the book? We have four guests, but not, not one of them dares to call me. Brother Adam Seeker, guys. Uh, subscribe to his YouTube channel. Uh, this dear brother, this beloved dear brother, because he knew I'm, I was going to go live, he had to cancel his live show. Keep our brother Adam Seeker, guys, who is really too kind. He canceled his live show because of my live show. He, he saw that I was going to go live and he canceled his live show for me. Can you imagine? Please keep our dear brother Adam Seeker who is an amazing Christian apologist. I love him so much. Please give him some love. Subscribe to his YouTube channel, please. And support him as, you can, as much as you can. And uh, by the way, guys, also keep our brother and sister, uh, Shino and his wife from Somali Christian TV, also in your prayers, guys. The Somali Muslims in Somalia, they are so triggered, they are so afraid, because the amazing work that our brother and sister are doing on their channel. Maybe you've seen my live show with them. They invited me the other day and we did a lot of damage on together on their YouTube channel in a live show. But these people are doing so much damage in Somalia. You have no idea. The Somali Muslims are now trying to take down their YouTube channel. So if there is someone who can help them, I have no idea how to do that. I only gave them a couple of advices how to be cautious. You know, to, to try to, you know, not lose their channel. So there are some tricks, you know. And uh, Lord willing, they will not lose their YouTube channel. Right? Christ is with you. Be more smart than those evils, these evil sons of Satan who are the Mohammedans. The Salaima, right? The Salaima. I call a Muslim Salami. Because he's always say S A W, S A W. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah is praying on on Muhammad. Salami, someone who is do, saying Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yeah, that's a Muhammadan guy. Salami, Sal, Ami, Salami. Muhammadan, right? Muhammadan. Okay. Muhammadan, not Muhammad. Muhammadan. Rob, you're finished. Yeah, sorry for the typo, guys. Salami, a Muhammadan who always says, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whenever they mention Muhammad, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad, Sallallahu alayhi Guys, we, we tried once to, you know, play with a Muslim guy. And we kept mentioning the name Muhammad. We said Muhammad, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Muslim must always say, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad, Sallallahu The Prophet, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <laughs> if you want to play with a Muhammadan who is really practicing Islam, Mention the name Muhammad and he has to say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Guys, it's, you know, if we really want to play with a Muslim, say, just mention the name Muhammad or say the Prophet of Islam. And he must say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is why we call them Salaima. <laughs> <It's> salami. <laughs> Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah prays on Muhammad, yeah. Brother, why? Why Allah must pray? Allahu Alam, why Allah pray? But Allah does pray, and we showed you his prayer last time, right? We showed you the prayer of Allah, right? Subuh, Allah is saying, Subuh, Quddus, Subuh, Quddis. And uh, the other words that he's reciting in his prayer. Allah even has his own personal prayer, guys. I kid you not. If you are interested to know 
Go watch that video that we made, that live show that we made about Allah praying. Okay, again, who are the people of the book, guys? Who are the people of the book? Christians, who are the people of the book? Yeah, subuh quddus. Allah is saying subuh quddus, subuh quddus. Sabaqat rahmadabi, rahmati ghadabi. Sabaqat rahmati ghadabi. That's always what Allah needs to recite in his personal prayer to ease his anger. Guys, Allah is one angry dude. Allah has a has his own personal prayer. Okay, the Jews and the Christians. Thank you. The people of the book are the Jews and the Christians. Exactly. So, guys, I want you to be really, really Focus with me. And I want you to know how to use this ayah against the Muslims. Watch. If chapter 9, ayah 31 was not enough, proving that Jesus is God, here's the final proof. Watch. The Muslims must say to us, we Muslims, we believe what has been sent down to us. And we believe, Christians, what has been sent down to you, O Christians, our God, Allah, our God, wa ilahana, wa ilahakum wahed. Wait, wait, wait. What are you saying to us, to the Christians? Our God, Allah, and your God, Jesus, is one. Uh oh. What did you say? Allah and Jesus are one. That's what the ayah is saying. The Muslims must tell us, our God, Allah, and your God, Jesus, is one. Yes? Hello, brother. Are you the same guy? What? Go, okay. Same kid. Same kid. How many accounts has this kid, man? How many accounts has this kid? Sit down, boy. I have no time for kids, man. Let me block this idiot, man. I only have to deal with kids today. That's it, yeah, Muslims. You are keep sending me your puppies? Yeah, Farida. Farida, you truly have no shame, you have no honor, you have no dignity to send me your kids to troll me. To try to troll me. Because I'm spanking you, your Quran, your Allah, and your fake prophet, the most obvious fake prophet in history, left and right. And you cannot handle it, so you keep sending me your puppies. So again, the Muslims must say to us that Allah and Jesus is one. You see here the shirk that Muhammad created in the Quran? Guys, do you have any idea what kind of nuclear weapon you have in your hands when you mention chapter 29, ayah 46? Why are our Christian brothers and sisters on Speaker's Corner, K. Soka Films, and others, why are you not using this ayah often? Yeah, Sister Hatun, why are you not showing them this ayah? This ayah destroys Islam. This ayah destroyed, uh, speak a corner Christians, Bob the Builder, Sister Hatun, all of you Christians, why don't you use this ayah with the Muslims? How is Allah and Jesus one? Because they are talking here, you see, do not argue with the people of the book. Last time I checked, people of the book are the Christians too. So when you say to the Christians, our God, Allah, and your God, Jesus is one. What does has was what does a Christian has to say? Hallelujah, that's true. <laughs> a Christian must agree with you. Amazing argument, right, guys? So why Christians, why don't you use chapter 29 I 46 often? Together with chapter 9, I 31. Back to back. Use it in your debates, man. Why do you go to the Bible? To try to prove that Jesus is God. Have we not always told you, Christians, in 2021, it's not working. It's not working to go with the, to the Bible with the Muslims. Especially those kind of aggressive Muslims. When you want to expose Islam, and you want to prove that Jesus is God, go to the Quran. Go to the Quran because the Quran confirms that Jesus is God. My Skype is the Arab Christian. What's your Skype, brother? Skype, my Skype name has been spammed all over the live chat. And still they are asking, what is your Skype? Sell, if you're not a Muslim, don't call me. I will block you. Only Muslims can call. 
Guys, use, please, for the love of God, Christians, use chapter 29, I have 46, because there is no escape from it. How is Allah our, our God? Because Jesus is our God. Our God, Allah. Saying our God, Allah, and your God, Jesus, is one. How is that possible? You Muslims always call us mushrikeen. You call us najis. You say you are mushrikeen. You Christians, you are mushrikeen. You worship Jesus. But wait, the Quran is calling our Jesus God. How is this possible, ya muslimin? How dare you to call us mushrikeen while your Quran is calling our God, God. Your Quran is calling Jesus God. Our God, Allah, and your God, Jesus, is one. That's what the ayah is saying. And yeah, exactly, Shaykh Humud, guys, Shaykh Humud said, you Christians believe in three or, oh yeah, yeah, exactly, Shaykh Humud. Look, this is a wonderful comment by our admin here. Let me paste what he said earlier again. Shaykh Humud said, you Christians believe in three. How is this three where the Quran, while the Quran in this ayah is saying, our God Allah and your God Jesus is one. It's one. How is it three? The Quran just confirmed that the Christians, the God of the Christians is one. How is it three? You see, even this evil book of Satan, even Satan in his book, the Quran, must confirm that Jesus is God. Wonderful, right? Guys, please take notes. Don't immediately go to the Bible and try to prove that Jesus is God when you debate a Muslim. Go to the Quran because the Muslims don't accept your Bible, guys. Stop being idiots. And I'm talking to those Christians who are dhimmi Christians who do not understand how to debate with Muslims stop going to the Bible learn how to debate Muslims and learn how not to debate Muslims learn use their own Quran against them in the court of law please please make it easy for yourself I'm trying to help you guys help me to help you learn how to deal with Muslims learn don't go to the Bible show them from straight away from the Quran because they can't call the Quran Daif They can't do that. Right? The Quran confirms that Jesus is God. Chapter 9, ayah 31. And chapter 29, ayah 46. Back to back. Back to back. Quran, chapter 9, ayah 31. Back to back. With... Quran chapter 29, ayah 46. Guys, I am putting energy in this. My back is hurting. I'm already live for how many minutes already now? At least an hour. My back start to hurt. My voice is almost gone. Why don't you Christians learn? When I see in my comment section, I see Muslims, they say Jesus is not God. Immediately, a, a dhimmi Christian, this sissified Christian, uh, brother, but if you go to the book of John, Jesus is God. Why don't you learn how to debate Muslims? Stop. It's not working. They don't accept your Bible. They call your Bible corrupted. What is the point? What is the point? Yeah, Christian, stop being idiots. It's not working. Go to the Quran and spank them with the Quran. I really get angry, guys, when I see that happen. You, a lot of Christians still don't learn. Guys, please. For the love of God, please learn how to debate Muslims from now on. And it's really important to take notes. We'll not always be there to teach you guys. I hope, I hope that our live shows and teachings will not go in vain. Please, Lord, don't allow it to go in vain. We will not always be there. Yes, guys, you don't need us. You don't need me. You don't need Christian Prince. You don't need Sam Shamoon. You don't need any of an, an, any one of us. But if it's the plan of God for us to teach, then so be it. But I hope that many Christian apologists will stand up, will rise up when we are not there anymore. This is why it's very important to spread our videos, guys. We know the Arabic. We can read the Arabic and we can dissect the Arabic. Look what it says. Wa ilahana 
our Allah, our God, Allah, wa ilahana. The Muslims must say to the Christians, wa ilahana, our God, Allah, wa ilahakum, and your God are one, wahid. So Allah is one and Jesus is one. Allah and Jesus is one. Because they are addressing the Christians, right? The people of the book, the Christians. Do you see it? So they must say to the Christians, which is us, our Allah and your Jesus is one. Bam! Man, this ayah is so damaging, you have no idea. You have no idea what kind of weapon you have in your hands, guys. This ayah, I, it's not very enough to mention this ayah to you guys. You know, we are, we are people of... Re 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 to repeat, we need to repeat this until it stucks, right? It must stuck like glue. If Muslims don't accept this, they have to... Assume that Muhammad, he committed shirk. Muhammad, he committed shirk. Our God and your God, Jesus, is one. This is shirk in the Quran. Ya Muslimin, your Quran contains shirk. If you don't want to accept it, that means you, 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 are, you have to deny this ayah because it's shirk. How can Muhammad say in his man-made book, the Quran, our Allah and your God, Jesus, is one? How is this possible? If this is not shirk, then I don't know the meaning of shirk, which is idolatry. Muslims always say, we practice Tawheed. Uh, Allah is one. Okay, Allah is one with who? With Jesus. Because you're talking to the people of the book. Our Allah and your God Jesus is one. Thank you very much, Ya Muslimin. That's what your Quran is saying. Is this shirk? Ya Muslimin, is this shirk? Or did, G uh, did Muhammad... Did your prophet just confirm that our God, Jesus, and Allah are one? If chapter 9 and 31 is not enough for you. Arbaban, the lords are Allah and the Messiah. And again, chapter 29, I have 46, back to back. Our Allah, wa ilahana, our God Allah, wa ilahakum, O Christians, your God is one. Wahid means one. Wahid, this is the true one, guys, not Ahad, right? Means one. Wahid. This is the true one in Arabic. Not Ahad. Like in chapter uh, Surah Al-Ikhlas. Right? Allahu wa Ahad. No, it says Wahid. This is the true one. You see? Muslims, when they go there, immediately spank them with, uh, say, okay, are you saying that, are you saying, are you quoting this because you want to prove to me that Jesus is God in, in the Quran? Maybe. Allahu Allah. Guys, let us uh, change it. Let us change it a little bit. All right? Let us bring some fun now into the maze. I mentioned this, guys, on my live show with our brother, our dear brother, Adam Seeker. We mentioned this with a brother, Adam Seeker, but I know a lot of people here maybe didn't see it. So thank you for being here, guys, again. God bless you for spending your time with me on this epic day of days. We are here spanking Islam left and right. And no Muslim dares to call me. We only have trolls. Look at this. I found a book. I found a book. It's called Shadrat al-Dahab. Fi Akhbar min Dahab. And the guy who wrote this book is called Shihab al-Din al-Hanbali. Volume 7. This is volume 7. This is the name of the book. This is the writer of the book. Shihab al-Din al-Hanbali. Giant in Islam. Guys, we are going to have some fun with Islam now. I'm going to show you some funny stuff. And I hope you can, uh, you can uh, laugh with me about the Muslims and uh, the Sunnah. This is the Sunnah. Muslims must, must accept this. Look at this. I found this hadith. I found this hadith. And it's basically saying that there was a guy. There's a guy. Who took a miswak, a siwak. Muslims love to tell you. This is the, the Islamic toothbrush, brother. And he... فَأَخَدَ uh, siwak. Look what it says. فَأَخَدْ siwak. وَتَرَكَهُ فِي تُبُرُهِ تُبُرُهِ Meaning, he put it in where? In the place where the sun doesn't shine. 
if you know what I mean. He put it in his buttocks. The Muslim guy, he put it in his buttocks. That's what it says. And then, and then after doing that, you know, he starts to, he's behind, <clears throat> start to uh, hurt him. And even his intense, in, uh, his stomach, you know, his belly. And then it says, after that, he became pregnant. A guy became a pregnant because he stuck a siwak, this toothbrush, uh, basically a, a huge, uh, you know, it's basically the root of a tree, right? That's what a siwak, a miswak is. Miswak. Siwak, miswak. Basically the root of a tree. Long, they can be very long, right? These are roots. And they cut them in, them pe in, the, in pieces, right? So Allah alam how long the, this piece was. He put it in his ass. Uh, sorry for my French. I'm saying things as, the, as it is, guys. He put it in his ass. He put the siwak in his ass. I kid you not. And then he gave birth to a rat, a jardun. And this rat has a head of a fish, samaka. So his, his, the head of the, of the rat, the head of the rat looks like a fish. And look what it says. This is basically my summary. And by the way, this is page of this book that we showed you. Page 551. Look, 551 in the Arabic. Look, the hadith says, and this is the source. We mentioned the source. The man took a stick, siwak, and forced it inside his buttocks. What, what, what? He put the stick, the siwak, inside his buttocks where the sun doesn't shine. Later, his belly and his behind started to hurt him badly. And then he became pregnant and gave birth to a rat. So we can say basically in Arabic, Khalaf Jardun. He gave birth to a rat. And it says here, the head, the head of the rat looks like of a samaka. Samaka in Arabic is fish. I forgot to mention this uh, with our brother Adam Seeker last time. We, meant this, we mentioned this hadith, but I mentioned, I, didn't forget, uh, I forgot to mention this part, guys. And the head, it looks like a head of, uh, of, a, of a, a fish. A fish. Fish, brother. Fish. What? I mean, look at this tiny little rat, brother. I'm the son of a Mohammedan, brother. And my head looks like a head of a fish. Yes, brother. What, what, what? Yes, this is the sunnah, guys. And this is the book. This is the book. Giant of Islam, the guy who wrote this book. Muslims must believe in this. A fishy rat, yes, a fishy rat. And because, only because the guy put uh, the siwak in his ass, brother. Allahu alam. Beautiful story, guys. Let us continue. Here is more. These books, guys, unfortunately, these books you will not find in English. Because too embarrassing. Brother, the guy put a siwak, a maswak in his buttocks and he gave birth to a rat and the head of the rat looks that like of a fish. Yes, brother. That's Islam, brother. They Muslims must believe in this, brother. The Salah Imam must believe in this. Ya Salami, you believe in this? A guy put a stick in his ass and he became pregnant and he gave birth to a rat? Only in Islam, brother. What? Brother, true story. Here's more. <laughs> Here's a book by Imam Ala al-Din al-Kasani and he's a, a huge giant, a giant in Islam. In his book on volume four, volume four of this book, I found another amazing, amazing story, amazing hadith on page 485. And the chapter is called Kitab al talaq the book of divorce, basically, right? Chapter 485. Uh, sorry, uh, page 485, page 485. Look what it says. There's a guy called Dahak. And Dahak is a giant, another giant in Islam. وَقَالَ الدَّحَاك وَلَعَطْنِي أُمِّي وَقَدْ حَمَلَتْ بِي فِي بَطْنِهَا سَنَتَيْنِ So this Dahak guy is saying that his mother carried him in her belly, in her womb, for two years. So his mother 
was pregnant with him for two years. <laughs> Muslims must believe that uh, Muslim women can be uh, pregnant for two years. Yes. Yeah, Muslim women can be pregnant for four years, uh, seven years, five years, ten years, unlimited number. It's, it can be crazy as you, as you like. Name a number. Imagine this guy, according to him, his mother carried him in her womb for two years. Then when he came out of the belly of his mother, he said, when I came out of her belly, I had tooth. I had teeth. He had a, to a tooth, guys. Here's my translation. A dahak, this is by the way why he got his nickname. The dahak, guys, in Arabic means the smiler. Someone who smiles. The smiler. Maybe he's a joker. I don't know. Allah. So the smiler said, the dahak said, look, this is cutie, cutie pie. Look, look, look at this guy. This is the dahak when he was a baby, brother. When, he gave, when his mother gave birth to him, he had his teeth already. Kuchiku, kuchiku, brother, kuchiku. Look what he's saying. The hag said, my mother carried me in her belly for two years. Then she gave birth to me with me having teeth. <laughs> no way. No way. No way. The guy was inside the belly of his mother for two years, and when his mother delivered him, he already has his teeth? Yes, that's what he's saying. This is the source, this is the book, volume four, by Imam Ala ad din al Kasani. A giant in Islam. I challenge any Muslim to call this guy a liar. Could you go? Look at these beautiful teeth, man. Two years in the belly of his mother? Yes, this can only happen in Islam, guys. Any Mohammedan? <laughs> oh boy. Only, only, only in Islam. What can we do? This is the funny cult of the Mohammedans. Guys, take a screenshot. <laughs> Muslim men giving birth to rats with a head of a fish. At the hag being in the belly of his mother for two years, and when he was born, he had a lot of teeth already. This is why he's called at the hag the smiler. They even gave him a nickname because he, when he came out, he looked like this. Kuchiku! Look at this beautiful smile of the hag. <laughs> <laughs> Truly, Islam is not a funny cult, guys. Now, guys. Enough of the jokes. Let us go to a serious topic. And if you watch my short video, guys, I was shocked. I was shocked that I found this fact in Musnad Ahmad Volume 3. Musnad Ahmad Volume 3. For the people who do not know, Imam Ahmad Hanbal, Imam Ahmad Ibn Hanbal, Imam Ahmad Ibn Hanbal is one of the founders of the four schools. His school was called, or is called, the Hanbali school. In Sunni Islam, guys, in Sunni Islam, you have four schools. That's what they call them, right? In Sunni Islam, you have four schools. You have the Shafi'i, right? And the founder is a Shafi'i, the Shafi'i school of thought. You have the Maliki, the founder is Maliki ibn Anas. And you have also the Hanafi. And the last one, the Hanbali. Four, right? One of them, the founder is Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. A giant! Muslims cannot call him a liar. And I was shocked that I found the following damaging fact in his volume three in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. Volume three. I found the following hadith. This is the Musnad, guys. Let's see if I can give you the link. Let's see. I hope I can find the link for you. Just a second. I think I got it. Yeah, here. Here's the link, guys. 
you can download it. And if you go to page 1119, 1119, page 1119, here's the, the download link of the PDF file. So if you go to the PDF file, you scroll all the way down, page 1119, 1119, you will find the following hadith, this hadith here. All right, I gave you the link. If you want to download it, you can check it out so to see if I'm lying or not. Muslims always call us liars. This is Musnad Imam Ahmad, Musnad Imam Ahmad Ibn Hanbal, and his Musnad on page 1119 of the PDF version. All right, here is the number 15,967. 15,967. It says the following. It says the following. And I had to, unfortunately, I don't have this in English. I'm not sure if it's translated, but I had to give my own translation. It says the following. The hadith, guys, the hadith is mentioned in many books, actually. It's not only, the original is in Musnad Ahmad, but it's also mentioned in the book of Suyuti in Jam al-Hadith. Even there you can find, this is the number in Jam al-Hadith by a suyuti Jalal al-Din al suyuti in hadith number 8951. So it mentioned everywhere and it's highly, highly authentic. Sahih. Look what it says. Rijala or Rijala Sahih. Sahih. Look what it says. Allah's Messenger, S-A-W, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, prayed for us. So Muhammad was with the Sahaba. And who is mentioning this? An Ibn Rawah al Kalai, right? He is mentioning this, and he's saying that when Muhammad he was praying, he recited Surah Al Rum, which is chapter thirty of the Quran, right? Chapter thirty of the Quran. Satan put on Allah and his Sahaba satanic recitation. Why? What is the reason that Satan put satanic verses on the tongue of Muhammad? <laughs> Can you imagine, guys? Muhammad not knowing, Muhammad not knowing, not knowing the difference between Satan and Allah. Can you imagine? He's reciting Surah Al Rum, which is chapter 30 of the Quran, not knowing that Satan is casting down satanic recitation on him. And what is the reason for that? That Satan came, the all-powerful Satan in Islam, came in between, started to give satanic verses to Muhammad. And Muhammad, the reason, uh, according to Muhammad is, because people came to pray without performing ablution. Imagine, because some idiots in Islam, the Sahaba, some idiotic Sahaba, the companions, they forgot to wash their nose, their ear, behind their ears, they forgot to put uh, water in their nose because remember, Satan lives inside the nose of the Muslims. Because they forgot to do ablution, they forgot to wash their hands and feet and nose and ears and whatnot, elbows and whatnot, Satan came and he was playing with Muhammad like a little donkey. Satan started to ride the prophet of Islam like a donkey, giving him satanic verses. Muhammad not realizing it because some people forgot to do evolution. So next time, if you don't want Muhammad to receive satanic verses, ya sahaba, I want you, if you want to pray, Muhammad is saying to them, then pray, then perform a good evolution. Brother, else Satan will give me satanic verses, Muhammad is saying. Wow, wow, wow. This is sahih. All the men, all the men who are mentioned in the chain, Rijala, Rijala, Sahih. All men mentioned in the chain are Sahih. This is Sahih. This is Musnad Ahmad, brother. This is Musnad Ahmad, Imam Ahmad, in his Musnad. I challenge you to call Imam Ahmad a liar. And guys, for the people who do not know, Imam Ahmad, his school, the Hanbali school, do you know who that guy is? He is basically the one that uh, Fifi, Fifi is a Salafi, Fifi, Sister Fifi, Sister Farida, uh, sister Ali Dawa, uh, Ali Drama, uh, uh, Sister Ibn Fibn, Farooq Ibn Fibn, all these Salafis, uh, Mojab, 
the golden shower boy, all of them follow the Hanbali, Hanbali sect, right? The Hanbali school. All of them must accept this book. All of them must accept this book. Sahih. All the men are Sahih in the chain. You see it? Take a screenshot, guys. Please, for the love of God. If they dare to say, well, the satanic verse is a lie. No, it's not a lie. Muhammad was receiving satanic verses on many occasions. On many incidents. Not only the incident that happened in Mecca, guys. This is a second time. Can you imagine? This is another incident. This is not the only incident that Muhammad received satanic verses. This is the second time. And Allahu Alam. Allah knows best. Breast. Allah knows best in how many books we can find more damaging stuff. I found this by accident, guys. I kid you not. Lord willing, guys, I can do more digging. If I can do this full time, Lord willing, if, the, if our Lord and Creator wants me to continue teach, and if I can do full time ministry, Lord willing, I can read more books and I can find more damaging stuff for you guys to use in your debates. How many incidents did Muhammad have with Satan? How many times? The one in Mecca. Remember the one in Mecca that is mentioned in the Quran? Chapter 22, ayah 52, when Muhammad was in Mecca. Again, Satan coming to him. Said, uh, Muhammad not realizing. Muhammad thinks he's giving uh, the Quran to the, to the Meccans. Look, chapter 22, Surah Al-Hajj, ayah 52. And all the noble messengers or prophets whom we send before you. It occurred with all of them. So Muhammad need to lie about all the prophets. Can you imagine? Because he knew he got busted. He need to lie about all the prophets that whenever they recited, Satan included a bit of his satanic verses on the tongue of Muhammad and all the prophets of Allah. All of them are say, Satan prophets. Do you see it? All of them, one by one. So Satan cast satanic re revelation on the tongue of Muhammad. So Allah then wakes up from his nightmare. And start to abrogate what Satan included on the tongue of Muhammad. Do you see it? وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رُسُلٍ وَلَا نَبِيًا إِلَّا إِذَا تَمَنَّا أَلْقَى الشَّيْطَانُ فِي أُمْنِيَتِهِ فَيَنْسَخُ اللَّهُ مَا يُلْقِ الشَّيْطَانُ إِلَى آخر الآية To the rest of the ayah. أبرادة ها? Satanic verses, brother? Yes, this is Quran. Oh, maybe this is Daif. <laughs>
Look how much damaging stuff I'm providing for you guys. Chapter 74. Look. Ya ayyuhal muddathir. So this is the chapter of the muddathir, the cloaked one, the one who has a robe on him. Muhammad. See it? So the context is Muhammad. Look what Allah is saying to Muhammad. Ya ayyuhal muddathir. Oh, the cloaked one. Oh, the cloaked one. Faqum faandir. Faunzir. Faqum qum faunzir. Rise up and warn. So Allah is saying, rise up, ya Muhammad, and warn the people. Warn the Quraysh. وَرَبَّكَ فكبر. Allahu Akbar. Say Allahu Akbar, ya Muhammad. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> okay. And then Allah continues in this chapter. And keep your clothes clean. Tell Aisha to scratch the semen of your clothes. وَثِيَابَكَ, وثيابك فطهر. وثيابك فطهر. And tell Aisha to scratch the semen of your clothes, O Muhammad. Yes. George Yaqub, you're an idiot. Christian pretending to be a, I mean a Muslim pretending to be a Christian. Spamming my live chat. Yeah. You, you, have, you have issues, bro. Anyway, what, do, what can we expect from Muslims? And keep your clothes clean. Tell Aisha to scratch the semen off your clothes with her fingernails. And the last one. And and stay away from worshipping idols. Here's the one million dollar question, ya Muslimin. Why is Allah, after Muhammad receiving three different chapters already, why Allah is still reminding him in the fourth chapter? By the way, if we look chronological order of the Quran, this is the fourth chapter, right guys? Chapter Al-Mudathir is the fourth chapter that Muhammad received. So my one million dollar question is, listen carefully. Ya Muslimin, listen carefully. Why Allah needs to tell Muhammad? And Ya Muhammad, stay away from worshipping idols. So you see, Muhammad kept committing shirk. Muhammad kept worshipping idols. Muhammad kept being ridden like a donkey by Satan. Satan controlling Muhammad over and over. And Muhammad was worshipping idols. While he was supposedly the last prophet, the seal of all the prophets in Islam. How is this possible, ya Muslimin? Why? Why Allah needs to remind Muhammad? Ya Muhammad, stay away from worshipping idols. I thought Muhammad would ne never commit a shirk, ya Muslimin. But the Quran is, uh, it, it, it tends to tell us something else. Muhammad, the idol worshipper? Uh-oh. In the Quran? Yes. Look. It's in front of you. Any Muhammadan who dares to say Rob Kishin, you're lying? Some Muslims will say, Rob Kishin, it doesn't say that RC. <laughs> yeah, uh, Sheikh Omad, you love that. Uh, you love that line, right? It doesn't say that RC. Let me make a remix about it. It doesn't say that RC. If we go, guys. Let's say I'm lying, or maybe this is a false translation. <laughs> what else is new? They always say, it's the Aif translation, brother. Ahmad Reza Khan is a kathab. He's a liar and deceiver. This Sunni Muslim. Ahmad Reza Khan is a liar. He's lying about the Quran. He's giving false translation. Right? That's what Muslims always say when they can't handle the truth. Now, if we go to a tafsir, let us go to a tabari, for example. If we go to a tabari, guys, and let me <clears throat> show you what I'm trying to say. Let's see. All right. I'm only putting Google Translate for you, so you will have an idea. If we go to tafsir of this ayah, same chapter, Surat al Muddathir, al Muddathir. Right? Surah al Muddathir, chapter 74, ayah 5. 74, ayah 5. 74, ayah 5. 74, ayah 5. Tafsir who? Al Tabari. Who is better to an Al Tabari in Islam? Tafsir, Tafsir al Quran, Al Tabari. The Kram de la Kram himself, right, guys? The number one Tafsir daddy, basically. Right? He is basically the best in Islam, right? When it comes to Tafsir. At-Tabari, the most earliest guy, basically. <sighs> if we go there. 
we can find the following. Let's see. I'm looking for it. Just bear with me. I like. I'm looking for the part that I want to show you. Uh, ba -ba -ba. I'm looking. Yeah, you will move death there. Okay. Okay. Is it on this page? It has many pages. I'm looking for that part that I want to show you guys. Bear with me. Albara Yunus. Maybe it's on the second one. Just a second, guys. I'll find it eventually. Yeah, you will move that there. Qum fatahir. Okay. I think uh, maybe on the third page. قال حدثنا ابن عبد وثيابك فطهر اوكي فطهر وثيابك clean your clothes okay okay look how how long this tafsir is guys i need to go to the whole uh, through the whole pages to find the part where it's talking about Fatahir is still Fatahir. Clean your clothes. Tell Aisha to clean your clothes. Okay, we understood it already. Uh, okay. Uh, uh -huh. Look. Look what it says. Fakala huwa al asnam. So, what are the roots, guys? A roots. What are the roots? According uh, to this, uh, to the tafsir of uh, Tabari, this part, Waruts Safajur, Aruts, what is the roots? Those are the idols. Huwal Asnam, look, copy paste. Look what it says here. If we switch to Arabic, why am I having Urdu? Or maybe because I had a live show? Okay, it's the idols. Do you see it? It's the idols. Huwal Asnam. So the meaning of Aruts. Did uh, Ahmad Riza Khan lie? No. He is correct in his translation. The roots are the idols. So Allah needs to remind Muhammad. While Muhammad already received three different chapters. This is the fourth chronological order. Allah needs to tell Muhammad. Ya Muhammad, stop being a mushrik. But wait. He's already a prophet. He's already squeezed by Jibreel inside Kaif Hira. Iqra, Iqra. Let me squeeze you. Maybe uh, juice will come out of you. So Jibreel kept squeezing him, and Muhammad started to receive Quran. So even after three chapters, in the fourth chapter, still Allah needs to tell Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, stop being a little mushrik. Mushrik uh ibn -huh. Mushrik. See, it's everywhere. Look, and this here, here, this is the, here, here another one. Man al kalam. This is the part that I was looking for actually. Waqala, and he said. وَمَعْنَ الْكَلَامِ الْأَوْثَانْ فَهْجُرْ عِبَادَتِهَا Meaning, the meaning of this is that you have to stop worshipping idols and giving them service. Here, copy. Let us, I'm only using Google Translate, guys, to show you what it says in Arabic. That's it. Meaning of the speech or, or the words, مَعْنَ الْكَلَامِ And the idols abandon their worship. Uh-oh. And leave their service. This is Tafsir Tabari on page 4, the online page. Tafsir Tabari, page 4 of this link. Let me give you the link, guys. All right? And this is the part, this part here. Let me copy it and give it to you guys. So you can do your own homework, Muslims, and see if we are lying. Put it in Google Translate. Put it in any dictionary website or whatever. It says the following. معنى الكلام والأوثان فهجر عبادتها وترك خدمتها. What does that mean? Meaning of the words and idols abandon their worship and leave their service. Uh -huh. So Allah is saying to Muhammad, Ya, ya cloaked one, O Muhammad, the cloaked one, the one who has a clothes on him, rise up and warn, and then say takbir, فك وربك فكبر. 
وثيابك فطهر and keep your clothes clean tell Aisha to clean your clothes and stay away from worshipping idols and give them their service right any Muhammadan who dares to say you're Christian you're lying oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy any Muhammadan who dares to call me a liar any Sheikh any Farida any uh, Mojab any Ali Dawa oh wait Ali Dawa doesn't know Arabic he can't read Al Tabari. <laughs> Maybe the the expert in Arabic, Mr. Mojab himself, Muhammad Hijab, the golden shower boy. Maybe he can call me and say, "Rob Christian, you're lying." Maybe he can show us and teach Rob Christian uh, some Arabic, like he thought he could uh, help uh, Brother David Wood in that debate. Let me teach you some Arabic lessons. I know that I knew that I had to teach you Arabic lessons. Allah prays for. Not to the Prophet. Ma'ana al-kalam. Wal-awthan fahjur. Ibadatiha. Watruk khidmatiha. Meaning, Allah is saying to Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, stop worshipping idols, abandon their worship, and leave their service. Wow. 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 Let me give you the link again, guys. Page four of this link, okay? There you will find this part here. Just put it in Google Translate. And you'll see. Rob is spreading lies. Yeah, I'm lying. You see, Sultan, where am I lying, you evil son of Satan? Where did I lie? Where did I lie proving that your Quran is saying clear so clear that your prophet was worshipping idols while he was already a prophet? Muhammad already received three chapters. Call me a Sultan. I challenge you to call me and prove to me where I'm lying. Show everybody that I'm lying. I challenge you, your father, or maybe your mother, who is the real man of the house. If you don't, let your mother call me. It's in front of you. <laughs> wow. 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 Muhammad became a nice little mushrik, yes. You see it? Why are Muslims so scared to call me today, guys? And why am I getting messages? Hello. Yeah, well, what's the point, uh, guys, to send me a message saying hi to me? As if I don't receive enough uh, spam already. You Christian, Christians who are sending me messages, you're an idiot. Christians who send me messages saying to me hi on Skype, you're an idiot. You're not better than, uh, than the Muslims who are spamming me, right? Who are trying to troll us live on air. You are not better than them. Honest to God. Stop sending me messages. Say hi to me. What's wrong with you? Right? You have no idea how much spam I get. What's the point? Hi Rob. Look. Who is this idiot? Who is this idiot? Honest to God. Anyway. Uh, the lines guys. Since we don't have any Muslims. The lines are open for the Christians. If you have any question. About today's live show. I know it has been a long live show. But it was really damaging. Thanks to the Lord. All for the glory of Christ. Today we did a lot of damage. And we had only trolling Muslims. Uh, no, your prophet was the agent of Satan. Look, it's in front of you. And if that's not enough, Musnad Ahmed, brother. Musnad Ahmed. We showed you from Musnad Ahmed. Muhammad became the prophet of Satan. Allah's messenger prayed for us. And he recited Surah al Rum. Satan put on a satanic recitation on the Sahaba and Muhammad. Muhammad did not knowing the difference between Satan and Allah. Because only because some people forgot to do ablution, brother. So next time, if you don't want Muhammad to get satanic re revelation from Satan himself, perform good ablution, brother. Right? Innama labasa alayna shaytanu. Right? That's what it says. Allah, uh, Allah's messenger, Muhammad, was being basically clothed. Literally, it says labasa, meaning clothing, but uh, that's literally, meaning Satan came with his satanic revelation. He came, cast down satanic revelation on Muhammad. Muhammad not knowing the difference between Satan and Allah. Muhammad receiving satanic rec uh, recitation while reading the Quran, chapter 30, Surah al rum Can you imagine? Muhammad is reading chapter 30, right? This chapter, and Satan comes in between. 
Surat al-Rum, the Romans. You see? This is Musnad Ahmad, and it's also mentioned in the book of Suyuti, in his Jama' al-Hadith, Hadith number 8951, and in Musnad Ahmad, Hadith number 15,967. Sahih! How much more evidence do you want me to give you, ya Muslimin, that your prophet was the prophet of Satan, not realizing it? Ya Sultan, Ya Sultan, why do you follow a prophet of shaitan? Ya Sultan, Ya Sultan, why do you follow a prophet of shaitan? Ya Sultan, Ya Sultan, why do you follow the prophet of shaitan? <laughs> oh boy. Uh, any Christian wants to call? The line is open, guys. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Sheikh Omad, I think you have more than enough uh, content to use to make another remix, right? Wicked, wicked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Man, today was fun, man. I had so much fun in spanking the Prophet of Islam and no Mohammedan can do anything about it except calling me uh, messenger of Satan, bro. You're a, you're you're a, you're a satanic, Rob. <laughs> you're satanic because you are proving to everybody, you are proving to the world that Muhammad was the prophet of Satan. Oh boy, yeah, I I I understand how my, how 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 hurt you are, yeah, Muslim. To sh to sh see from your own books that Muhammad became the prophet of Satan, receiving satanic verses. While he was reciting Surah al rum chapter 30 of the Quran. It is Sahih, Hadith. Musnad Ahmad, brother, Musnad Ahmad. This is Musnad Ahmad. Here, this is the Arabic. And this is the book. Let me give you again the link, guys. So you can download the book on page 1119. All right, page, the PDF version, right, that I'm about to give you. Here's the link. On page... 1119, you can find this hadith, this hadith. And I, Muslims, I promise you, I took a vow, as long as no Muslim can refute me, I will keep sending nuclear bombs on the face of Islam. I'm going to continue spank your satanic prophet left and right, as long as you don't dare to call me and refute me. Show everybody that Rob Christian is lying. I challenge you. Yalla ya muslimin. The only thing your heroes like Fifi ibn Fibin, right? Faruq ibn Fibin, Ali Dawa, Mimi Hijab, Mojab, Golden Shower Boy, all of these comebacks, all these thugs, they are all hiding from us because they know they cannot handle us. I promise you, as long as you cannot refute me, I will keep bringing down the hammer on the face of your fake Satanic Prophet Muhammad. All right? And the only thing you can do is either call me names, right? Or troll, or being a nice little troll on Skype. That's the only thing you can do. All right? Let's see if I can show you the page, guys. It's a really, uh, you know, the PDF file is huge. Look how many pages it, it contains because it's all the volumes basically in one PDF file. Imagine, this is for free online. Can you imagine, guys? All the volumes, all the volumes in one PDF file. Look how, what kind of luxury time we are living, guys, that we can download PDF of very, very expensive books, right? Look how many pages on the left. I'm scrolling down in the PDF, right? If we go to that page, I'm going to show you how easy it is to find it. I'm almost there. <laughs> I'm almost there. Page 1119. Page 1119. Almost there. Yeah. Okay. This is, and I had to make it bigger for you guys. All right. Here, this is the hadith. If we make it bigger. I only took a screenshot, so you have an idea. This is the page, right? Look, this is the hadith. 
Let me make it a little bit even bigger. See? It's, we're, we're, we're almost there. <laughs> Here, this is the hadith, right? 15,000 in the Arabic, 15,967. This is only one source, but it's as I mentioned, it's also in the book of a Suyuti. Again, sorry, it's I think it's not translated. In the book of a Suyuti, Jalal al-Din suyuti that guy, another giant, like uh, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. This is the book of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal in his Musnad. Right? In his book, you can find the same hadith. And this is the hadith in front of you. I only took a screenshot. Page 1119. Okay. Any questions, guys? Any any calls? No calls today. Okay. Adam Seeker, you want to call? Or maybe someone else? Sorry, Adam Seeker. Adam Seeker, I know. Sorry that you had to cancel your show, man. I really... Uh, I, di I didn't like it that we, you know... But thank you so much. Thank you for your respect. Guys, our brother Adam Seeker, he canceled his live show for for me. Can you imagine? This awesome brother. He didn't want to be a stumbling block, so he canceled his live show. He scheduled it on the same time. So keep this brother in your prayers, guys. Keep me in your prayers. Give brother Adam Seeker, he's also an admin here, some love. Subscribe to his YouTube channel. Thank you, Adam. God bless you, brother. You want to call me, Adam, or maybe someone else? Anyone, any call before we wrap this up? I think we gave Muhammad and Islam a lot of spanking today, right? A lot of spanking. Hello? Hey, Earl. Hey, brother Adam. How are you, man? I am very well, thank you. Don't say sorry so many times. Brother, you are embarrassing me. Please <laughs> don't. Uh, but, you know, I have to God say things as they are. God you bless are... you, my friend. Thank you for what you did. No, 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 no. You are doing a great job, brother. You are doing a great job. Awesome. Yeah. Praise be to Lord. You already get very little time to come live. Yeah, and I know, right? Your shows are awesome, brother. God, God bless, bless you. you. Your shows are also epic, brother. Uh, may our Lord and Savior give you the energy and the breath of life in your lungs and to keep you so as healthy as you can to do what you do for a long time, brother. May God bless you, your ministry, and your family. Thank you, brother. God bless you as well. Uh, sorry, that's it. I didn't want to take a lot of your time, but like you said it twice now already, rather thrice, and I had to jump in now. Brother, please don't embarrass me. Please <laughs> keep on with your show. It's okay, you brother. I love, great you. I love you. Awesome brother. show. God bless you. And I love you. you. Always with you, brother. God bless you. God bless Take you. care. Thank you. Thank you for your call. Bye-bye. All right. I uh, I received another call. That was brother Adam Seeker. Thank you, brother. Uh, let me call this gentleman back. Let's see. Gerard, are you there? Hello? Hello? Hello, you're live on Hi, can you? Yes, I can. Welcome. Uh, how are you, man, man? I'm good, man. What's up? Good, good. It's getting cold here in South Africa. Oh, yeah. Wow, guys, we have a guy from South Africa. You're a Christian or a Muslim? Ah, uh, Christian. Oh, Christian. Welcome, my friend. Go ahead. What do you want to share with us live on air? Go ahead. Hi. Sorry. Well, I actually want to touch on. Um, I actually want to touch on when you brought up the uh, what's it? The uh, chronological order of the Quran. Yes. Yes. And you got idol, isn't it? That Surah Al Fatiha was revealed after that. Uh, basically, no. Uh, you, let me let me try to explain what's going on. Okay. This is uh, Surah al muddathir right? As we mentioned. And here is the chronological order. If you want to, to understand what's going on. Let me put it on. Do you see the screen? Can you uh, open? No, I'm on my phone. My wife. Okay, so. may, but you can, I think you can open YouTube and make sure to mute it. So you'll understand what I'm trying to say. Two seconds. Yeah. Take your time, brother. Uh, you know, uh, for you know, for the people who maybe have difficulties to understand, 
Surah Al-Fatiha is not the first chapter, right? Chronological order is not the first chapter. Okay. The first chapter is chapter 96. That's what all Muslims confirm. That's Surah Al-Alaq. Chapter 96, Surah Al-Alaq, the blood clot. When, uh, when Jibreel is starts to squeeze Muhammad. Iqra, Iqra, right? Read. Are you there, brother? I can't hear you. I'm here. Yeah, I'm okay. Here. So do you see the screen now? I see it. Okay. Look, this is basically, uh, in a nutshell, I only gave a couple of chapters. This is the chronological order how Muhammad supposedly received the Quran. This is the first chapter, chapter 96, yes. Surah Al-Alaq. Iqra. Read. The blood clot. Then we have yes. chapter 68, the pen, Al-Qalam. Then chapter 73, Al-Muzammil, the unrobed, or the unwrapped. And then chapter 4, 74, Al-Mudathir. This mm -hmm. chapter that we see here. This one. So okay, again, so yeah, the, my question was... Chapter Sorry? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my question but to the Muslim is, is... Yeah. No Sorry, what's your question? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no it problem. Yeah. Um, but my question is, the one that's after uh, chapter 74, yes. that was revealed in chronological order, yeah. was that Surah Al-Fatiha? Surah Al-Fatiha is not the first chapter, my friend. Yes, in, in today's... I know, Quran, yeah. I know, but is it the first? You're, cut, you're cutting out a little bit. Can in you repeat chronological it? order. I didn't understand. Can you repeat what you said, please? So, is it the fifth surah in chronological order? I know it's not in chronological order as it is today. Yes. Okay. Are you, uh, you so want to know... If that is the case... Yeah. yeah. If it is the case, then why did Muhammad have to say Shahada when he was already a prophet. Oh, basically, uh, Surah Al-Fatiha, my friend, Muslims say that it's a prayer, right? It's a prayer. They 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 mm -hmm. use it as a prayer. So it's not basically uh, the Shahada. The Shahada uh, is a different topic. It's basically, you know, they repeat well, it. They are asking Allah for guidance. But if we go to the to Al-Fatiha, we need to ask some important questions to the Muslims because to who, you know, they, they always say the Quran is the speech of Allah, but to who is Allah talking here? To who is Allah saying, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim? To who is Allah saying, Alhamdulillah Rabbin Alameen? And where does it say, Qul? I challenge any Muslim to show me the word Qul, say. No, it says, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbin Alameen, ar Rahman ar Rahim, Malik Yawm al Deen. And so on and so on. So, and Allah needs guidance. So it's a prayer, right? They say it's a prayer. And this is the chronological order. So Al-Fatiha yeah. is not the first chapter, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I read in Azbab al al uh, what. What's a book for the... Asbab al you mean? You mean um, Asbab al Yes, that's true. Yeah. Asbab al so is the, is the, the tafsir that for basically the reason why an ayah comes down. That's why it's called Asbab yes. al Yeah. So I read in that yes. that when Muhammad went out to go to the toilet, um, that <laughs> Jibril came down. And said to him, Oh Muhammad, and he ran away. Yeah. I think you know it. Yeah. Um, but anyways. Chapter Al Fatiha is basically later on, Yeah. Go ahead. Later on, it says that Jibril says to him that you must say the Shahada. You must say Muhammad must say there is no God but Allah. Yeah. And Muhammad is his messenger. Yeah. So it's not in the Quran, eh, by the way. It's in the, it's in the hadith. It's in the hadith. You won't find the shahada in the Quran. Mm. It's in the hadith. Mm. Yeah. And, and here is, by the way, the, the chronological uh, order. Yeah, if you want to know, the Fatiha is basically in chapter 5. See it? It's not chapter 1. Surah mm. Al-Fatiha is chapter 5. Chronological order. Look. Chronological order. Al-Alaq, Al-Qalam, the pen. Al-Muzammil. And then Al-Muddathir. Where Muhammad is uh, is worshiping idols, then Surah Al-Fatiha. So the real 
real chapter for Al-Fatiha is chapter 5, not chapter 1. So even the Quran that we have today yeah. is a messed up book. But you see it? But it still says in Baba Nazul that he had to take the Shahada. Yeah. So that means that he only became a Muslim when he got Al Fatiha. No, 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 no. That's if my no. understanding no, no, no. is correct. No. No. Muhammad received not at all. No. In chapter one. Chap the real chapter one, here is where Muhammad was in Kaif Hira. When Muhammad was in Kaif Hira was in this chapter, right? Surat al alaq Yes. So that's chapter 96 of today's Quran. Look, if we go to the Quran, chapter 96, mm -hmm. this is basically the cha first chapter. Chapter 96 is the first chapter, right? Read! Iqra! Iqra! Bisma Rabbika! Look, Jibreel is saying to Muhammad, Iqra! Read. That's the first word of the Quran. You see it? Mm. This is when why they say me. this is why they say this is the first chapter that was sent down. Look. Surah Al Alaq. That's the reason mm. why. So no, Muhammad was he already a Muslim. But again, why Allah needs to remind Muhammad in the fourth chapter, again look, chapter Al Mudathir is number four. Chronological order, number four, look, 74, al mudathir chronological order. Why, after receiving one, two, three, in the first chapter, Allah still needs to remind Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, stay away from worshipping idols. Why? Uh, that's the question that I'm asking Muslims. I want an answer. I demand an answer for my question. Sounds legit question, right? And Muslims don't dare. It is to, a legit question. Muslims don't dare to call me and, 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 and answer this question. Why? That's the question. That's <laughs> the only question that, that I that I want an answer for today. It seems like a very simple question. Mm. Of course. But any answer that they will give, I will use it against them in the court of law. You know me, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother. Thank you for calling. I really need to wrap this up. Thank you for your call. And uh, okay. God bless you, my friend. Thank you. God bless you, my friend. God bless you. Thank you for your call. Bye-bye. Shall we take one more call and wrap it up, guys? Yeah, the Surah Al-Fatiha. Yeah, and Adam Secret also confirms that Surah Al-Fatiha is the fifth chapter. And we already showed it on the screen, right? Surah Al-Fatiha is the fifth chapter. Right? See? Number five. Surah Al-Fatiha. So why, again, the one million dollar question, why Muhammad, after receiving one, two, three chapters, Allah still needs to send a chapter down in the fourth chapter, in chapter four basically, which is nowadays chapter 74, in Surah al mudathir Allah needs to send Jibreel and say to Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, stay away from worshipping idols. Please call me and answer my question. Please. I will demand an answer. All my audience demand an answer. All the Muslims should demand an answer. Why is our prophet still worshipping idols after three chapters? Why? No answer. Allahu A'lam. Allah knows best, brother. Why? <laughs> All right, guys. I think we don't have any calls more. No. I don't have any missed calls. Thank you for being here, guys. Today was an amazing, epic day. We did a lot of damage. And no Mohammedan called me to refute me. Why is that? Ask yourself this question. Why no Mohammedan dares to call me and answer such difficult questions? Because Islam, Islam cannot be defended. This cult is such a messed up man-made cult. Man-made cult. The Quran is a man-made book that cannot be defended. It's such a messed up book that you can't, that you cannot defend it. The only thing you can do, if you start to use your God-given brain as a Muslim, the only option for you is, is to leave Islam. If you really care about the truth, else, please stay in Islam. Islam is good for people who are deaf, mute, and blind. But the Muslims who can use their brains, I advise you, 
to do your homework. Please do your homework and see if we lied. We gave you tafsir al-tabari. Ma'ana al-kalam al-awthan fahajur ibadatiya wa turk khudmatiya. Allah is saying to Muhammad, and idols abandon their worship and leave their service. In chapter al-Muddathir. Why? Because Muhammad was worshipping idols while being already a prophet. That's damaging. That is really damaging. Muhammad being a nice little mushrik still. That's really damaging. Please Muslims wake up. To the Christians, thank you for being here. Thank you for your amazing support. To the Muslims, please Muslims, we don't hate you. We love you. This is why we are doing this. Please, we are doing this so that you can use your God-given brains. Think, think. Don't be a nice little dhimmi. You are calling us dhimmis, but the real dhimmis are you. You are the slaves of Muhammad. Muhammad created this cult for his sexual desires, for his power lust, and that's it. He didn't care about the truth. He wanted to conquer lands and get as much women in his bed. That's why Muhammad created Islam. Thank you for being here, guys. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. And Muhammad is nothing but the prophet of Satan. And today we proved it to everybody from the most authentic sources in Islam. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your amazing support, guys. Go with the peace and grace of Christ. May our Lord and Savior Christ bless you, your household, your families and loved ones. Thank you for your amazing support. Thank you for your financial support. Thank you, guys. Keep our admins in your prayers. Keep me in your prayers. Keep all the warriors who are risking their lives to expose this man-made cult. Keep them in your prayers. Thank you. They use wood. We will see each other. Lord willing. They use wood. We will see each other very soon. God bless. Welcome. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications.